All Excellent. right. Uh, I'm Libby Schultz. And today's webinar. Thanks for. Sorry, y'all. Hang on. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we are here to hear our live webinar today, Making Your App Soar Without a Container Manifest. Um, I'm going to read our code of conduct, and then I'll hand over to Jason Smith, customer engineer at Google. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you're not able to speak, but there's a Q&A chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. Drop your questions there. We'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. And please be respectful of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF online programs page under online programs. They are also available via this registration link you used to get in today, and the recording will also be on our online programs YouTube playlist under the CNCF playlist uh, channel. With that, I will hand it over to Jason to kick off the presentation. Thank you very much, Libby, and thank you everybody for joining. I see we have quite an open house here, and I'm on the Pacific Coast right now, so thank you for waking up early for this. Uh, we can have a great start to the day learning a little bit more about ways to make containers without manifest files. So as mentioned, my name is Jason Smith. I go by Jay. I will always say that I will respond to either. If you call me one or the other, I will raise my head and acknowledge you. So that's fine. And you can follow me there on Twitter. Uh, and there's my dog, which you may or may not hear during this session. So heads up on that one. So on today's agenda, we're going to kind of define environments. One of my big things that I like to do is I find it very beneficial to kind of recap where we've been and kind of set the stage. Then we'll talk a little bit about build packs, Tecton, quick demo, and then we'll jump into a Q&A. So I started computing seriously, like running my own <clears throat> web apps, running my own PCs back in, I want to say around 2004, 2005. And this checklist might look very familiar to a lot of people here. Uh, if I want to build my own little PHP app to, I don't know, let's say manage my college schedule or something, I had to go through this whole mess of things. I had to first find an old computer and the, usually I can go to like Goodwill or something or hit up some yard cells, get a bunch of components, put it together. <clears throat> then I would install Linux, usually Ubuntu, but sometimes I would mix it up. I, I was an early adopter to the Ubuntu, Ubuntu all, I pronounce it multiple ways, Linux. <clears throat> install Apache, MySQL, PHP, installs the various PHP plugins for like SSL and whatnot. Configure Apache, create virtual hosts, create new users, create folders, open firewalls and ports. And then, of course, because it was in my house, I had to go and find a way to port for the network or use Dyn DNS or something. And this was all before I even started writing an application. Like, this is literally everything I had to do before I started writing an application. I'm sure we all remember having to do stuff like this. And a lot of it was just setting up infrastructure. Like I mentioned, uh, finding an old computer, making sure the full, the ports are forwarded, making sure my VMs are, or not my VMs, sorry, making sure like I have the right hard drive, I've got things mapped properly, I'm doing the right security, all of this stuff. <clears throat> Virtual machines came around and I felt like my world changed when I got into doing hosted virtual machines. Uh, whether it was like a, a VPS system or something on the cloud or whatever it was in, the, in those days. Uh, my world changed. It was just like, oh, snap, I don't have to mess with hardware anymore. This is great. I can just install an operating system, configure, and boom, I'm ready to go. And then there were a lot of images out there already. And there's quite a lot of tools out there that exist. And most of these open source tools you've seen before, I'm sure many of us have used it. I could declare how to stand up my VMs, how what I want on there, all that stuff, kind of write code. But I'm still kind of configuring the operating system and all of that and patching and whatnot. Then comes this little thing called containers, which further abstracts away the operating system. And now we're just talking about my application, my dependencies. We all know this. We all use Docker containers. We were all familiar with it. But you know, there, there comes the question of, well, how do we manage all of it? Okay, well, Kubernetes makes the most sense. 
if I dockerize all my applications, I can Kubernetes, I can use Kubernetes, it'll abstract away all of the infrastructure. I can declare my code uh, using simple YAML, good to go. Of course, there still comes this little problem of Docker files. Now, I would argue that Docker files are much simpler than a lot of times your, your uh, cookbooks or VM manifest or anything like that. But still, if you're a developer, you know, using a lot of, uh, using a large Docker file is not fun. You still have to declare stuff and you still kind of want to just focus on code. Like, hey, can, can something just build the file for me? Like, can I just code maybe have a little bit of stuff in there that kind of declares what I need and then all of a sudden it compiles and, well, we do have such a thing and actually it is called build packs. A build pack is a set of executables that inspect your app source and creates a plan to build and run your application. In short, build containers without a Docker file. Originated at Cloud Foundry, if I'm not mistaken, it's now a CNCF project. And it also is great for CICD because well, what's the point in having the Docker files if I'm not going to actually uh, implement them somehow? Do I still have to use, you know, Docker push or something like that in order to get the code up there? Or is there a way to automate that? We'll talk a little bit more about that later. So build packs allow developers to take advantage of the benefits of the containers without needing to understand them. So I write the source code, build packs, go ahead and turn it into the container. And my CICD, my CICD, pipeline will go ahead and deploy it. Why this is important is again, letting developers focus on the things that are important to them. Like with all the new libraries that come out, all the new dependencies, uh, trying to just keep up with what standard in modern technology can sometimes seem very intimidating, quite frankly, just because it's like, what do I learn? What's gonna be deprecated? What's gonna be important? How do I actually remain competitive? How do I actually build something that my users are gonna like? On top of that, I need to keep up to date with how to make sure my code deploys properly. Well, uh, into a container, how do I make sure these containers work, are secure, all that stuff. Is the, the point of build packs is kind of to, to remove that friction from the developer. And as I mentioned, it's an incubated project. It was actually a sandbox project. Uh, I don't have the exact timeline, but I want to say about a year, year and a half ago, but now it is actually incubated. So it is graduating, it is growing up. And it's kind of a, a container within a container. So build packs is actually a container that builds containers without Docker files. It seems a little, seems a little odd, but essentially what you're doing is you're deploying a special builder container that will then take the uh, code that you deploy, examine it, and then say, hey, this is this is what I think the Docker files should look like. Let's look at a few different definitions. So the builder, that that's the actual part of the build pack that will build the Docker container. So it is, uh, it is in and of itself an OCI or Docker container. Uh, I think a lot of people are trying to move away from the term Docker container, not necessarily because there's anything wrong with the term, but because like, you know, it's like, uh, uh, it's more than just that one company, or it's like trying to separate the idea of the company. It's like how you, how you might use the term, um, you know, like Kleenex for tissue where it's like, well, Kleenex is a company tissue is the uh, actual thing. So it's like, okay. So a lot of people will say OCI image, but just to kind of set that clear, because you might see both here. <clears throat> a composition, uh, so you'll have a composition of build pack groups and lifecycle binaries. What does that mean? We'll see later. Uh, it's basically a long set of, of different builders to create a, a simple application. As you know, your application is not going to be just one simple file, one simple Docker file. And hey, I've got a running application unless it's a hello world application or something to that effect you're going to have more complex. And then of course, you'll have a full platform that provides the users the, if the information. So basically, what does this mean? I write my code, the build, I deploy the code, the builder will then just say, okay, this looks like Golang code. Let us go ahead and make this a Golang container, or this looks like the code should work this way, this co the code should work that way. It supports pretty much every language. And then it's also kind of in the, the spirit of open source, various companies have taken like the primitives for build packs and kind of built on top of it so that it works better with their cloud providers. So, you know, 
Google, Cloud Foundry, VMware, et cetera. They'll have different ones. Now, I mentioned build pack groups, as you can see. Um, when you create yourself, uh, when you create a Docker file, you notice that you'll have the different steps. So you'll have like uh, from, you know, Alpine, and then, then I'm going to take this step. Then I'm going to do this. Step, then I'm going to copy this file. I'm going to create this entry point. And I'm going to. That's essentially what the build pack groups are. Each group is kind of its own like step, if you will, and you will group all of these different builders together to the final product. So it's basically, basically, hey, how do I build the language? As it says, like, okay, I, I can tell that this is Golang, or I can tell that this is Python. I think in order to make a Python application, we are going to need to put in this, 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 and this. The code is in this file. Okay, so it's, it's doing a lot of reading and guesswork, if you will, but it's a little, a little better than just saying guesswork because it is more intelligent than that. It is, it gets things right. And then, then of course you have the stack, stack which is kind of the base image. You know, your Alpine, your Ubuntu, whatnot. Uh, each build pack supports a set of stacks. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, I don't believe you can do the, I, this could be dated, but I'm not, I don't think it does the um, app build yet, app get, but it, I think that might now, to be honest, this might be an older slide. But ultimately, you, you have like the stack, the base level, and you know, like, okay, this is like an Ubuntu stack that can support. PHP, or this can support Python 3.9, uh, this can support uh, Golang with XYZ libraries, so on and so forth. So basically, you define your stack, you decide that becomes the base image. Then on top of that, the builders will build the application using the code, making the guesses or making the educated guesses, the very educated guesses, and building out the entire application. And as I mentioned, build, build packs are run in a container called a builder, which is pretty straightforward. You, it's not, you don't have to really install anything special or, or add anything as special to your system in order to make it work, which is great. Uh, my benefit, and I've really been liking build packs lately because it just makes it so much easier to deploy code. I think a lot of times we're all trying to find different ways to, to containerize things. I'm sure if I asked everybody here, What's the number one way you containerize things? So a lot of it will probably be either Docker build or include something in your CI CD pipeline or uh, Canico, but it all requires you to still have a Docker file usually. The nice thing here is that this kind of eliminates that unless you just speak in the word of code or speak in the language of code, something you're familiar with. Now, I'm a huge fan of Tecton, and so is my dog, as you can see there. Um, a lot of people are saying, well, this, you might be listening and saying, well, that's great, but where does the container, that builder container live? Like, wh how does it deploy? Does it live in my Kubernetes cluster? Am I actually just going to have to run it as its own container on my system? Uh, how do I actually implement the code? Well, Tecton is the way I would do it. And I always talk about Tecton because I love Tecton. It's so great. Uh, it is governed by the CD Foundation in anybody is not familiar, it is essentially, I would call it a sister foundation to the Cloud Native Foundation as they're both kind of under the Linux Foundation. Uh, Kubernetes native components, reproducible and composable event triggers for automating pipelines. Uh, you can also, we have a catalog for reusing tasks in pipelines. So for very simple tasks that are reusable that you will do multiple times, like push to my Git repository or containerize this application or something like that. You can use, you can just download a lot of these cattle from the catalog, these tasks and pipelines to just automatically do that, you know, probably tweak in the things that you need specifically like the URL for your Git repository or the, um, you know, the, the, the security token, something like that. But for the most part, it's like 90% of the way there. And that way you don't have to redo do a lot of stuff. And it is integrated with other projects such as Jenkins X, Knative, and more. In fact, uh, part of it, a little bit of a complicated history, part of it actually originated from Knative, but then it was just like, hey, this is such a good product. It should be a standalone thing. Like, why should it, why, why should it be a CI CD solution for one specific environment? It should be a CI CD solution for everything. So we're going to use a few, we're going to define a few basic things within Tecton. 
So there's a pipeline, and that's similar to what you might think with the standard CI/CD pipeline. That is essentially the set of steps, the set the set of actions that take place that take your code and ultimately take it from code to deploy and doing a bunch of stuff, security checks, tests, all of the approvals, all of that stuff. So the step would be an operation in the workflow, such as running a Pi test on a Python applications. The steps are the individual things that it's doing. A task is essentially a collection of steps. And then of course the pipeline is a collection of staff, uh, it's a collection of tasks. Triggers are the component for eventing. So do I wanna actually have to go in every single time somebody does a git commit or a branch is merged or something and manually trigger the build of the code or the deploy of the code? That just doesn't really seem like a great idea in the CI CD world, especially when we're trying to be more agile developers. Um, so instead, we have what we have an event listener, which is essentially a CRD that, it, oh, that is, will listen for a specific JSON payload. The good thing is that with a lot of JSON payloads, you, um, uh, you, you know, there, there's some uh, defaults that were there. So, like, it'll say, okay, well, this is, we know what a GitLab or a GitHub or whatever payload looks like. So, we already have the, uh, the schematic or the schema there. So, you just tell us what where it's coming from we got it or you can also just create your own custom if you're wanting to trigger in your own way that's fine trigger template is the resource uh, for the triggers and then the binding is essentially what binds the trigger to the payload to give you a good idea let me go ahead and see if i can expand this a little bit this looks like an eye chart almost that's i think any bigger apologize for that well in short this is essentially what a task with steps would look like. If you look at it, you have a few parameters that I set like, okay, here's my Docker file. This is where my source code lives in the source path. Uh, this is the, this is where my Canico in this example, I'm, I've talked about Canico in the past being a way to build containers without actually ever have, having to pull it down to your own machine. It builds containers in the cloud in your Kubernetes cluster, uh, your resources. So those are kind of like the variables you'll put in like, okay, this is the image I want created. This is a Git. And then of course the, the actual steps that are executed, uh, such as, uh, you know, do a pie test and do the Canico build. You take the, you take a task. Now you line up a bunch of tasks. Now you have a pipeline. So as you can see here, I have, I took the task from the previous one, the build task, which is actually building the container taking my code and containerizing it and then pushing it to a Git repo. And then of course the deploy process, which will then take the code from the Git repo and then push it to wherever it is I'm hosting the code, whatever Kubernetes cluster I'm hosting the code in. And of course, I wanna bring up the fact that there is the catalog. Uh, the benefit of the catalog, as I mentioned earlier, is that there are a lot of pipelines and tasks there that are very common that you, probably will use and they are all you really do is kind of plug in the 10 percent of the variables that you need that are relevant to you such as your git repo or what you want to name your container or things like that whereas the actual steps that do the thing are already created so you know why bother reinventing the wheel when you don't need to come let's, let's speed things up for our development <clears throat> and of course uh you, the, the nice thing here is that the, the way Tecton works is, is a lot of the tasks are reusable and then they're kind of plug and play too. So I can actually add new tasks into a pipeline or add new pipelines. Uh, one way to think about Tecton that I always like to say is it's not traditional, like simple CI CD platform. It's more like building blocks so that you can build a great CI CD platform. So it's not something that I'm gonna just necessarily click, 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 it's deployed, it's running on my server, I can do all the great stuff to it. There, you know, some assembly required, but it allows you to do a lot more than what we've been able to do historically. Um, largely because we are, get, you are getting those primitives, you are getting that access to the lower level um, components of Kubernetes that allows you to build these individual tasks and pipelines to do some pretty cool stuff. Speaking about the catalog, did you know that Tecton has some tasks related to build packs. 
And I'm going to include on the slides when they're available, like the um, like a slide at the end that will have a, a link to a bunch of different resources that give you kind of the uh, groundwork to use build packs um, with Tecton because we want a full solution. You know, if I say, hey, I made your life so much easier, look at this, you can use build packs, you can deploy uh, code as you want, but, or you can uh, containerize your code however you want, but how do I actually, uh, this is great, the code is containerized, how do I actually use the code? How do I actually consume the code? How do I actually get the code to do something? Uh, whereas I get, you know, it, we all use CI/CD pipelines. I think most of us are using CI/CD pipelines, or at least thinking about using CI/CD pipelines. So by giving you these Tecton tasks, it's making it that much easier for you to utilize the uh, CI/CD pipeline. <clears throat> and in fact, I will go ahead and show you real quick how we do this. Give me one second. I need to move some stuff around here. While I'm doing that, I'm going to look and see if this question here. Yeah, so essentially you have to choose, that's correct. You essentially have to choose the uh, proper uh, stack. Now, granted, you are able to customize stacks. So um, in the same way, there's default Docker containers out there that you can download, or there's uh, boilerplate code for different pieces of software, et cetera, et cetera. In the same way, there's a lot of quote unquote boilerplate stacks that you can use that you can build on top of if you need to. Uh, if you have a platform engineer who's on the team, that per, you know that person can be in charge of it and then just pass things along to the, along to the developers. Um, but yeah, there, you do need to use that stack. The nice thing is you can build your own stacks. You're not like kind of stuck with whatever stacks are provided to you. Grant, of course, that is extra lift. You know, I'm not gonna say that it's not, but it is something that you can do. And let me get back to sharing here. All right. That's kind of the nice thing about everything, kind of seeing CF, I could take a minute for here. Like everything Kubernetes, and I've been a huge like Linux and open source fan for who knows how long, I think I lost count uh, since my college days, whenever that was. And the one thing I've always liked is it's like, hey, if there's not a solution there today, we'll give you the basic building block so you can just build it yourself if you want to. And you know, obviously that's not always the best idea if you're in a if you're in a rapid situation, but just having that flexibility is I think what has allowed things like containers and Kubernetes and Tecton and whatnot to come to existence because you've had a lot of great people come together and say, hey, let's take this code and or let's make it a little better. Let's find a better way to do things. So so my little aside there on the benefits of cloud. So let's go ahead and take a look here so that you can follow along. And I'm kind of one of those, no point in rebuilding, reinventing the wheel here. We are gonna go ahead and take a look at the build pack Tecton integration code. And like I said, I'm gonna, I mean, you can easily find this link, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the, um, in the slides later. So that way, if you, you know, make it a little easier to find it. All right, so, and then I'm using Google Cloud because I work for Google. It's easy for me to access a Google Cloud environment. This will work for any kind of Kubernetes cluster. This is, these are open source. These are not Google products. These aren't, you know, these are actually CMCF and CD foundation products, so. So we pull in the repo, we go into our Tecton integration folder Then we have a script. We have a. Uh, I do not have a local Docker registry set up. That's interesting. Okay. Let me see if I can still have my YAML though. Bear with me one second. I did have a custom YAML, but I might have it on a different project. 
Oh, here, let's look at the script. Apologies for that. We're going to just take a look here at our sampler on script just to give you an idea here. Oh, see, so it actually build it actually will build the uh, Kubernetes tasks for you right here, or the uh, Tekton tasks by downloading them from the repo, the CD catalog, and build the actual uh, container. If we go to the Tekton hub, let me see if that's this is where I actually have it. Apologies in advance. I have been having a fun time with demos lately. Oh, it's going to apply to build tasks. So I think that, or build uh, packs, but I think that might be an older version. I guess we'll find out. In the meantime, if anybody has questions, feel free to ask. Uh, let's see. Huh. Interesting. Let's do this. possible this just isn't connected mm -hmm. I don't know if we're able to do polling, but feel free. Uh, anybody here actually used build packs before this meeting or before this webinar? Just curious. Of course, my technology does not want to work today. Well, I am sorry about that. Um, uh, demos. Let me see if I can find some interesting code here to, to kind of I guess, uh, make up for the demo problem. Let's see here. Let me expand this a little bit. So you see, I can install the tech. To, uh, so I guess we can just talk step through step through this. Apologies again. Uh, so install tech on the dashboard. Super easy to do. You know, it's just kind of cube CTL. Uh, and then you can uh, uh, apply the file, and then there is a GitHub repo link to the actual YAML dashboard. is a pretty cool tool if you want visualization. It's more, I wouldn't say it's newer. I, uh, I would say it's, um, I mean, it's existed for a while, but I think it's a little more mature than it's been in the past, let's call it that, where it gives you a nice uh, UI to actually see all the tasks that are being run. But it's not a, it's not a hard requirement. Uh, you, you install the actual build pack version, which if we wanted to look at it, I'm not going to force you all to listen. look at a wall of YAML. You, and you uh, install this special task for pipelines, which will clone the Git repo. And this should be a smaller YAML, so we'll take a look at it. Oh, I lied, it is a large YAML, but as you can see, it's just a standard GitHub task. Uh, or not, sorry, standard tasks for cloning a Git repo via Tekton. Uh, let me just move this over here. You apply the pipeline, all very similar YAML we've all seen. Uh, create a file with resources on YAML, define a persistent volume claim, authorization, you know, we'll create a secret, no big deal. Uh, because whatever, wherever it is we're hosting our, we plan on hosting our Docker containers. Because remember at the end of the day, it is building a Docker container. Like it's not, just because you're not creating a Docker file doesn't mean that you're not creating a Docker container. It is still creating a Docker container. That container needs to live somewhere, uh, whether it uh, is Docker or some other cloud, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, some other container registry is fine. 
uh, but you do need to give the access authorization. We create a basic pipeline that's pretty straightforward. You create some workspaces, you create a, you kind of list the different tasks, what workspace they're a part of. Uh, so we have a task for cloning the repo. We got a tasks for uh, using the build pack and then some parameters, which you can think of as variables, apply the configuration. And then there's a, so remember when I mentioned triggers, so the triggers just kind of automatically trigger the build of a, of a Tecton pipeline. So an event such as um, I pushed something to a specific Git branch or there's a specific um, a specific tag label or something to that effect, and we want it to react to that. However, there's also these uh, tools called pipeline runs, which essentially allowed you to run uh, the file manually. So if I were to deploy this run.yaml, it would just go ahead and trigger the build right away. And then you can do pipeline runs to see the build. You can do some cleanups. It's pretty straightforward. Yes, Tecton and BuildPack are both open source. As I mentioned, uh, BuildPack is a CNCF project. It, are, it is uh, open source. And it is a lot of, I, I kind of like to think of it as like a primitive. The reason I say that is because it, just like the earlier question we had about different stacks and whatnot, because there are multiple stacks or multiple ways to do things, different vendors will build on top of build packs or create their own custom stacks that work great on their environment. Um, but build packs in and of itself, those primitives are open source. On top of that, Tecton is open source too. Uh, Tecton is part of the CD foundation, the, the which is a, I, I would call it a sister foundation uh, to the CNCF as they're both part of Linux Foundation as like kind of the parent organization, uh, whereas CNCF focuses on you know cloud native technologies. Uh, CD is more specific towards um, you know continuous delivery, which is important in the cloud native world, but not just a cloud native thing. Like it exists in other you know there's still legacy CD technology and everything like that. So hence having its own foundation. But yes, they are both fully open source. So you can contribute if you choose to. Um, we, you know, in the, in the spirit of open source, we can all use as many contributors as possible. So I would encourage it if, uh, if you have the cycles to do so and the desire. Um, uh, what we're seeing is with, uh, so with Tecton, we're starting to see a lot more companies actually adopt it. Um, in terms of uh, the primitives, as I mentioned, it's kind of a tool for building tools or uh, in the same way that like Kubernetes is kind of a tool for building platforms. It's not the, it's not the end goal. It gives you the, the building blocks to build your, your platform uh, versus it being just a point and click solution or something like that. Tecton is kind of the same way. So there's been a lot of companies that have taken Tecton and they're building open source um, tools or proprietary tools for that matter. Uh, using those open source APIs, open source standards of Tecton that way, kind of that way, there's kind of a standard between different environments. You're not having to go from, you know, this environment uses its own very proprietary stack, and but I want to be cloud native, and I want to I want to be in every environment, and you know, I want to be able to deploy on prem and in the cloud, so I don't want to learn two different things. So that's kind of a nice benefit to it, is the the fact that it is kind of that's what I'm looking for. It, it, it is following that open standard. Uh, I know Google has a solution. Red Hat, IBM has a solution. I know there's a lot of other companies that are contributing to it. But as you can see, it's all pretty straightforward. And there's this whole list of how to do different things with build packs, like how to build an R map. I built a Kubernetes cluster on a series of Raspberry Pi 4s recently. So, well, recently, like a year ago, but I guess in the sense that's still recent. So if you want to build ARM applications, we have setups for that. There's how to build a Windows app, which is great. Um, if that, well, if you build Windows containers, I don't just, you know, personal choice, but I know there's a plenty of people who do that. So it's nice to have this option. Uh, you're not having to use some kind of third weird third party solution. You can use the same solution that you're using for your non Windows machines. Uh, specify launch project tomals, uh, which is your project descriptor. Obviously, you're going to have a larger project. So there's a lot of cool things here. Buildpacks.io is where you'll want to go to read all the documentation. Uh, but ultimately, the end goal here 
is just to simplify the build process. I want my developers to be able to just write code, push it to the Git repo or wherever it is you're hosting it, and then let them know that at the end of the day, everything's going to be built. And they just have to really focus on the code portion. You know, there's been a lot of solutions with like Canico and whatnot, which will build containers in flight in the actual, uh, in the actual um, uh, it, Kubernetes cluster. But, you know, you still have to create a, a Docker file. You still have to create a something like that, which to some developers is a showstopper. I've seen some developers, which is understandable, say, you know, I, well, we don't know if we can get our, our entire team to learn the ins and outs of Docker files. This makes life easier. You get the build packs, but then of course, how do I use the container? How do I actually make it one thing? Well, Tecton, or how do I make it one pipeline? How do I make it one deployment? How do I, how do I take my code from code to running and test and ready for A-B testing or whatever? Tecton is kind of that middle ground. So you put build pack tasks into your Tecton pipeline and you, you've just enabled your developers to build containerized applications without actually knowing a thing about containers. Uh, if there are any more questions, I will be happy to answer them. And I will put in, like I mentioned earlier, I will put in a slide that has a bunch of different resources uh, for anybody who wants to learn more. Uh, you can also just hit me up on Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever. Uh, I love talking to people, but yeah, this is a, Somebody introduced me to build packs a while ago, and I've been having fun playing with them since because, I mean, I don't mind building a Docker file, but it is nice just to not have to, to, not have to think about it. Yes. So yes and no. Uh, uh, to the question about can Tecton also act as an Argo CD flux alternative? Yes. You can use event triggers to trigger a pipeline build because something was pushed to a repo. However, I have actually seen people use Argo and Tecton together to build a, a pipeline. So um, more of the integration stuff is done on the Tecton side in terms of integrating the code, but because of some specific use cases with say a canary analysis or whatnot, people will use Flux or CD to do the actual um, continuous deployment, uh, the actual CD portion. So you can do it all, the the entire CI CD portion with Tecton, or you can kind of piecemeal it together using Tecton with um, Argo CD or Flux or some other tooling, um, integrating them into Jenkins and existing, whatever existing pipelines you have. There's no right or wrong way to use it. Any other questions that I may be able to answer? Anyone else? Oops. Oops, there we go. Okay. Oh. oh, there you go. There we go. Have you seen Tecton being used for non CICD purposes? I personally haven't. I have kind of heard that they exist, but I personally have not tried it or seen it used myself in like a project, though I have seen people using it. I have heard of people using it for other things because again, it is it is not like a tool as much as it is a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the building blocks to build a tool. So in theory, you could use it to automate a bunch of different things if you chose to, uh, though obviously CICD is the most common use case. Uh, I would call the other ones uh, off-label, if you will. All right, anyone else? Awesome, thank you, Gabriel. Yes. All right. Well, if we have no more questions, I think y'all know where to find Jason if you need to follow up. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. And 
on another live webinar. It was great. And uh, be sure to join us for the rest of our online programs this week and next. Check it out on uh, cncf.io. Thank you so much, Jason. Take care. Right. We'll see y'all next time.